of the Rings is one of those franchises that continues to expand in different forms of media. Almost everyone has heard of the story either told through the movies or through the books. So how does War in the North fit into the lore of the franchise? In terms of plot, it takes place at the same time as the original trilogy, mainly during the Fellowship of the Ring. It features new characters, Aerodyne, Farron, and Andriel as the main characters, with their mission being to take down Agendaur before amassing his ultimate army, or something like that. The plot appears to be interesting at first, with a few interesting moments littered throughout the first few hours of playing, but it quickly runs out of steam halfway through. The highlights of the plot involve you and your party interacting with the characters that we know and love, and hate if you will. The highlight for me was when you reach Rivendrell and you can finally ask why can't Frodo just fly on the Great Eagles and drop the ring? Well, you get two reasons and there should only be one if you really are this confident. The first is that the Great Eagles don't interact. This is a complete plot hole because pretty much you're with the Great Eagles the whole time in the game. Second of all, the second reason that he gives is that it can't escape the, fly of Sa of the Eye of Sauron. But who the hell cares? They're too damn fast, and what is Sauron going to do? Just stare them down? Heck, you don't have not one, not two, but three eagles helping you throughout the whole campaign. Explain that, Gandalf. To be honest, my favorite characters in this game are the Great Eagles, especially Belarum. I mean, they're just extremely badass, and they all have pretty interesting backstories. The game should have been based off of the Eagles since they are the most interesting characters. They have a lot of emotion, a lot of passion, like I said before, good backstories, and honestly, who wouldn't want to play as a great Eagle? It also doesn't help that all the three characters you play have no personality and no interaction between each other, even though everyone has great voice acting in this game. Honestly, I can't really blame the voice actors even if they did suck. The script and the interaction in the game just don't allow your main characters to interact with each other. It's kind of a letdown. It sucks that I know more about Belaram and his two eagle friends more than I do about the main characters. That's a problem. Before I get into the meat of the game, which is the gameplay, I would like to talk about the graphics. The graphics in this game are simply amazing. The same Hollywood production values can certainly be found in this game. The environments look extremely detailed and it feels like you're actually watching a CGI movie during the cutscenes. The game is also fairly bloody for a Lord of the Rings title and it shows in the graphical department as blood goes on you as you're swinging to the orcs and it's just splashing on you. It looks great and it really immerses you in the battles. The character models of the faces could have been improved a bit but the weather effects certainly make up for it. It makes the world feel so much more dynamic than it actually is, especially here in Bree when you see the rainfall on the ground. It looks simply amazing. So how's the gameplay? Well it could be classified as an action RPG, but I just look at it as a hack and slash with RPG elements. The controls are pretty basic with left click as your weak attack and right click as your strong attack. The game also supports the gamepad which is pretty cool and works pretty well. As you're attacking enemies, a yellow arrow will appear above them. Pressing the strong attack performs a critical attack and enters your character into hero mode. Hero mode makes your hits unblockable and your attacks stronger. Sometimes when you're fighting big creatures such as trolls and giants, performing a critical hit can end in an instant kill and it looks amazing when it happens. So what's my biggest complaint with the combat? Honestly, that is a very hard question to answer, as there are a lot of problems with the combat. Number one, it gets way too repetitive, way too quickly. Most of the time, you're just stuck in one area facing waves and waves of enemies, for no apparent reason, just to make it past the gate. In terms of skill, your party is beyond ball sacks. They rarely stick with you when you need them, and they often steal your kills. Oftentimes, I find myself reluctant to reviving them since they only serve as mere distractions for the enemy. I need a lot more than that if I'm gonna take down a super villain. I apologize, I don't know why I called Agendaur a super villain. He's kind of weak and a pushover when you finally meet him at the end, which is very disappointing, by the way. 
One thing I do like about the gameplay, one element, is the loot. In almost every mission, there's a lot of loot to find in treasure chests. And also, depending on the character that you play as, you'll be able to find secret caches here and there. As the dwarf guy can break open walls to reveal certain passages and the character I'm playing as the Dune and Dine Ranger can find secret caches along the way. There are a few side quests that you'll find at the various towns. All these side quests are pretty easy to accomplish and most of them have very good rewards. Most of them offer you a choice of rewards such as this one where you can pick either a ring or an amulet depending on which benefits you'll want to reap. Along with buying and selling things at the store, you also can level up as more of the RPG elements that I'm talking about. Now here you can increase your strength, dexterity, stamina, and will, which all of course have its own little characteristics. What's very interesting are the skill trees, as depending on the certain perks that you choose will allow you to take certain routes. So if you want to expert yourself at sword mastery, you can do that. If you want to be more of a stealth character you can do that or if you're more of a ranged fighter you can do that as well. These skills are actually very useful so it's best to invest your time into them. While there weren't many of them I've encountered a few game breaking bugs. The most notable one was when this dude that I was fighting got stuck and no matter how many times I've hit him with special abilities I use, if I hit him with arrows, if I hit him with a turret, no matter what I did he would not die. And because of that, the next gate wouldn't open, so I had to restart this area all over. It was very tedious and it made the game feel even more repetitive than it actually was. The boss fights were absolutely atrocious, bland, uninteresting, and after you beat the boss, those same enemies you'll eventually fight later in other missions, so it just makes the game feel even more repetitive than it is. In certain parts of the game, you are able to Someone needs to make this happen. I don't know who, I don't know if it's going to be Kickstarter or whatever. I'll back you up 100%. But honestly, this game is just too bloody repetitive. At first, it's very good. It shows a lot of promise. It's very interesting. It has a good number of It takes a good advantage of it, having it side by side with the events of the trilogy. But honestly, the game is just a horror, especially because it just artificially extends itself. it's not that long but it's still a substantial amount of time this game will take around 15 hours to complete which is way too long for a game like this trust me I like hack and slashes I love Dynasty Warriors but this is just terrible for this game I'm stuck between two numbers so I'll give it a 4.5 out of 10 it has a few good things I like about the game more of the RPG side with the side quests and stuff like that however this game gets way too repetitive. If it moved faster in terms of pace and the storyline was more interesting in terms of the main characters you play as and the villain that you fight because it's very difficult to understand the mission and it's very boring to follow the story honestly, it could have been a better game. I also admire the different locales that you get to visit along Middle Earth as it is pretty cool to see the other side of Middle Earth, but honestly it's not enough to keep this game going. The enemy variety is also extremely limited. I guess I can recommend it to people who are fans of Lord of the Rings just to see another side of the story, another spin-off to expand on the franchise, but for a regular gamer it's very difficult to recommend. So right now I think I'm in the mood to play the Great Eagle Simulator of Middle Earth. This is Powerhouse, signing off.